Let's look at some practical examples for U-tube manometers. One possibility would be if we had an airflow and we were using a liquid in our manometer, something like water or perhaps a specialized oil manometer fluid. The setup we had before, we looked at location one here and location four here with locations two and three in the middle, and we got into it in a fair bit of detail. But let's just look at what we've got in this instance with air flowing along past an obstruction here so that the pressure here is lower than the pressure back here. If we look at the density at location one, and it's about equal to the density at location four because it's both air, and if the air density is much, much less than the density of the manometer fluid, then we can neglect the density of the air. The only thing that's going to have an effect on the pressure difference is the height that we measure here. So that delta H and the density of the manometer fluid will tell us what the pressure difference is. And so the pressure at location 1 minus the pressure at location 4 will be equal to rho of the manometer fluid times G times delta H. So this is a really simple application and it's really simple because we've been able to neglect the density of the air because it's probably about a thousand times less than the density of the manometer fluid. So we can still get a very accurate measurement of pressure this way. Another example that's not so common anymore is water over mercury in the manometer. And this was often used to measure the performance of pumps because the density of mercury being very high allows us to have a moderate sized manometer that can still measure the increase in pressure across a typical water supply pump. So in this instance, we've got a higher pressure at the outlet of the pump and we've got P4 minus P1, it's going to, well, let's walk it around from location one to two to three to four, just as we did before, in order to find out what the difference in pressure is between the pressure at four and the pressure at one. So the pressure at four will be equal to the pressure at one, plus this delta H from one to two, times the density of the water, times G. So that'll be H1 minus H2, and when we're collecting up the same one, we'll be looking at the difference between 3 and 4. So minus H4 minus H3. So we've got the two water lengths there, plus the change in pressure associated with this length through the mercury. That'll be rho of Hg, rho of mercury, times G, times the delta H in between. So if we collect terms together, we'll wind up with rho H2O times G times H1 minus H4 and we'll have the 2 and the 3 minus rho H2O for H2 minus H3 plus the density of mercury times G delta H and that delta H is H2 minus H3 so that's that height there. So we'll wind up with rho H2O times G times H1 minus H4 plus rho HG minus rho H2O times G delta H. Oops, and I see I forgot to put the G in up here. Rho H2O times G would go in there. So the big term is going to come from the difference in the densities between water and mercury and the difference in height between the levels of the mercury here. This is up around 13 and a half thousand. This is down around a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. So clearly the density of the mercury is going to have by far the biggest effect. Now if H1 and H4 are the same, then we'll wind up with that delta P, the P4 minus P1 just equal to the density of mercury minus the density of water times G times delta H. Now this worked really well for measuring pressure rise in water in pumps across a pump here with mercury down here as a measurement fluid when we were not as concerned as we are today with the toxic effects and, and polluting effects of mercury. However, we can use the same sort of effect, the fact that this difference in density shows up, 
to use fluids of very similar densities. So if we use fluids of similar densities, say a water and an oil, uh, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter and, and 900 kilograms per cubic meter, those fluids of similar densities, they'll amplify the delta P. So the delta P, small delta P, small density difference, times g will lead to a larger difference in height. So that by using similar fluid densities, we can get a much larger change in height for the same change in pressure. So those, those are some practical cases. We can measure air flows with water and just have to worry about the density of the water. We can measure water flows with mercury as a manometer fluid. Uh, as long as we're very careful with our safety issues and we'll wind up with a difference between the densities times the elevation difference here. Or if we use fluids of very similar densities, say two liquids, a water and an oil that will stay separated, then we can amplify that delta P to give us a larger delta H. And that can be interesting for practical measurements. For really practical measurements in automated systems, we'll always wind up using electronic transducers.